So what is up my fellow camera nerds? I went and did it. I pulled the trigger and picked up the Leica M11D. And the D is pretty much the exact same camera as the Leica M11P, which I already have, but this version has no screen, which you can see right here. And I just absolutely love that. I think that's going to get you about as close as you can possibly get to the film shooting experience, but keeping it digital. In fact, I think a lot of people would never even know that this is a digital camera if they even had it in their hands and shot with it. So in this video, I'm just gonna answer a few questions that I had on this camera before picking it up, which is how the hell do you know when it's turned on other than turning it on or the battery level or how do you connect it to the app? What does it look like through the viewfinder? They made it pretty simple, so I'm just gonna take you inside the viewfinder and show you what it looks like and connect to the app. Set back, let's jump into the viewfinder and check it out. So when you fire the camera up, the digital display that you see here that shows your shutter speed if you're in aperture priority or if you're in full manual shows your light meter. This display is what will be used to show things like your Wi-Fi connectivity, if your SD card is full or not, your content credentials, your ISL, a whole load of stuff. I would refer you to the manual to see just how much it actually does. Let's go ahead and fire off a picture. Now let's go ahead and connect the camera to the Leica Photos app. All right, so first thing you wanna do is open the Leica Photos app. So we're gonna go ahead and add a camera. So you're just gonna hit the plus icon. Before you start this process, make sure you have the latest firmware update. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus icon. Swipe over to the Leica M. Select it, then you're gonna pick which camera you have, in this case, the M11D. All right, it's telling us to power it on, so I'm gonna reach under here real quick and just power it on. And it did indeed power on. Enable camera's pairing mode. To enable pairing, press and hold the function button for five seconds and then release. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000. Okay, so we wanna go ahead and continue here. It says camera found, so let's go ahead and connect. Trying to connect to the camera right now. Camera added. Now it's automatically going to sync and uh, sync up the date and time, which is very convenient. You can, however, enter it manually into the camera if you like, but I think the way this camera is set up, this is gonna work much better. Let's go ahead and sync it. I'm gonna turn geotagging on. And for faster transfer, use the, the cable. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not worried about photos at this point. We're just connecting the camera. It's asking to join. We'll say yes. Taking a second here. Connecting. And boom, I just pulled up the gallery. I haven't taken very many images with this camera. Here's a few of the pictures that we just took while we were looking through the viewfinder. Uh, probably not in focus, uh, but I didn't have my eye up to it, so but it doesn't look that bad as you can see. So super, super easy to use the app. Um, if you want to download a particular image that you like, you can just hit download. And you can choose whether you, if you've shot it in JPEG and RAW, you can choose which format, be it JPEG or DNG or DNG and JPEG, um, and just download it that way. So you can download the the raw file and edit it directly from your phone, which is very, very convenient. And you can use it as a remote, so you can use a remote function to go ahead and trigger the camera, uh, make adjustments. If we hit the settings here, we can come up and it brings up a list of things we can change within the camera. Lens drive mode. If you want to change your drive mode, continuous, so on and so forth, noise reduction, exposure metering. This is pretty much what I've changed, I believe, is all I've changed is it, I think it was defaulted to just JPEG only. And I, of course, I want to shoot JPEG and RAW. I don't really edit a lot, but when I do, I do want to be able to have the RAW file uh, accessible just in case. Other than that, I'll just stick with the JPEGs. Um, let's just go ahead and download one image too. Let's say, say download. It's gonna ask us if we want JPEG, DNG. Uh, let's just go ahead and do the JPEG for this for this example. Downloaded. 
All right, so you can see which, which images have been downloaded by the little arrow that's on them right there. So that's pretty much it. I find that um, once you get in the camera and, and figure out those few things, you've got your settings right here, you could go through in your camera settings and make all kinds of adjustments if you need. I'm still learning this, so I just figured uh, this, these were questions that I had. Why not uh, show you guys? So I love it, super simple. All right, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. If you got any value out of it, give me a like. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. If you wanna leave a comment, if you wanna see about the camera giveaway that I'm doing, check that out in the description below. Other than that, I appreciate your time. Thanks for sharing your time with me and uh, we'll see you in the next one. All right, so if you stuck around this long, I'm gonna tell you a little secret. I would have loved to have shown you a lot more on this camera in this video, but unfortunately, while I was making this video, the camera actually broke. And when I say broke, I mean broke. So I sent it back to Leica yesterday and follow along if you wanna see how long it takes him to take care of this issue. I'll answer all the questions that I can and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.